Hello everybody! In this video I want to talk to you a little bit about downloading GIS data from the web or finding GIS data on the web because when anybody's starting a project or have been working in GIS for a little while one of the most common questions that I get is well where do I get the data and the short answer is of course there are lots of places you can get GIS data there are lots of places where it's available for download one of them is the US Census which I'm going to be showing you here uh, but on the whole it is true that we don't have a great way of searching for GIS data on the internet of course, we have text-based searches, which are extremely good, uh, such as Google, of course, that uh, brings web pages to you. But we don't have basically the equivalent of Google for searching geometry for GIS data specifically. If you've been going through getting to know ArcGIS for desktop, it gives you in the beginning uh, how to use Arc Catalog to search lots of data by geometry, by location, to help you find your data if you've got it managed on your computer. And it would be fantastic if we had something like that uh, for GIS on the web in general, but at the moment we don't. So one of the uh, strategies that people use often is just searching for GIS data. And by that I mean the phrase GIS data in a search engine, plus whatever it is that you're interested in. Because basically what you're looking for is where somebody has written the word GIS data, as well as the word for the keyword for whatever it is that you're looking for, or using the word shapefile, if that's what you're looking for, or geodatabase, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, and hoping that those words occur on web pages that actually allow you to download data. But in this example, what I want to do is just show you some information here on the U.S. Census website because it's a fantastic source of information, of course, about the United States, and a lot of it is set up for GIS data. So it's, uh, let me, it's easy to get to. Let me go ahead and show you. The first thing I'm going to do is go over here. You'll notice up at the very top there is this link uh, called geography and it has about maps and geographic data so I'm just going to click on it and take us to the main page here lots of the GIS data about the United States was actually originally created by the US Census early US Census material for conducting the census so actually the GIS data in general and the US Census have a pretty long history together uh, and, and they fit very uh, naturally together, of course. So if I look down here, of course, uh, right now, what's uh, the latest? Well, uh, maps and data, I mean, you can explore this. I encourage you to explore the U.S. Census site. But uh, I'm going to just click here on Tiger Products. So there we go. And you get to this website or get to this web page. Uh, and if you look for uh, or just uh, run an Internet search for Tiger Files, uh, U.S. Census, Tiger Files, you should uh, be able to get right here directly if that's what you're looking for. But take a look at uh, some of the different things that I have here. Uh, very useful. Uh, we've got links to Tiger Line shape files. Shape files are what we work with mostly in 379. So look, the census has shape files right there for you. We have geodatabases, which are GIS uh, uh, data as well. I don't talk about geodatabases quite so much in 379, but they are there. I've got tiger line files with selected demographic and economic data, cartographic boundary shape files. Okay, so what's the difference here? Well, you can explore exactly what you're looking for, but you know that you've got geometry that displays on the map display, and then you've got attribute information, and so it probably makes a lot of sense to you that you're going to have different uh, geometries for all the different areas that the census takes its enumeration, and then in the attribute table for each one of those, you're going to have all the data that the census collects. So you can't, uh, of course, the census collects a whole bunch of data, and so they don't already have all of that data attached to GIS files, but they do have selected demographic and economic data, as you can see right here. So if you're looking for some things, maybe the census has what you're looking for already attached in the attribute table in GIS for file format. Uh, file formats. But if you look here, uh, cartographic boundary shape files, that just has the geometry, and then you can add your own attribute information. KML cartographic boundary files. KML is the keyhole markup language, and it's actually a specification of XML, and it was developed for Google Earth, before it was Google Earth. 
when it was still Keyhole. That's uh, before it was acquired by Google. So if you scroll down here, which product should I use? It gives you a, a little overview here for whatever it is that you're looking for. Tiger line shape files, most comprehensive data set. They come in a shape file format. And then also the attribute information comes in .dbf format. You've got the geo databases here. Files extremely large. It notes here. Oh, type of data over here. Boundaries, roads, addresses. Uh, and so forth. Here is uh, the information that it tells you uh, what exactly is available pre-attached to GIS data. Boundaries, population counts, housing unit counts. So a little bit of stuff that it gives you right over here. Here are the cartographic boundary files are in shapefile format. The KML cartographic boundary files uh, those, like I said, are for Google Earth. You can put them into ArcGIS. There is a tool that allows you to convert KML files and bring them into ArcGIS. So they are available for that, uh, but they're, they can't be just immediately added. There is a tool to convert them to the form necessary format. And then TigerWeb actually is viewing spatial data online or streaming it to your mapping application. And uh, I think this is, is reasonably new, interactive viewer. Um, and I haven't gotten a chance to play with that quite so much. Uh, but probably what you're looking for, for the purposes of practicing to create a thematic map, is probably the tiger line shape files, or if you want to go directly to the tiger line shape files, uh, tiger line files with the selected demographic and economic data already attached, if it's got what you're looking for. I'm not going to go through every one of these. Uh, I'll leave you to explore them, and plus, things change all the time. Uh, but, you know, if I click in here, you, I can see that I've got the years up here and then download either through the web or through an FTP site. We've got uh, documentation. Uh, they're pretty good about documenting the data. Uh, and you can download it from here. If I go back over here to the ones that already have some data attached, well, okay, here's geodatabase format. I've got shapefile format, the different years, uh, different levels. Uh, whether it's census block or block group or uh, probably county is in there and state and so forth. Um, 2010, well, here's all the information, travel time to work. So that information comes uh, sort of pre-attached, even though it's not everything the U.S. Census collects. Okay, so the U.S. Census is one source of information for GIS data. Uh, especially for social scientists, and it uh, does a pretty good job of already having data in established GIS formats uh, that are available for you to download and uh, use immediately. So there are other sources that uh, we can look at, especially if you're interested in uh, physical geography or uh, more the physical sciences, earth sciences, rather than the social kinds of things that we're working with here with the census. Uh, but these, the census data are, is a fantastic thing, A, to be familiar with in general, and B, it makes it really easy to create thematic maps inside ArcGIS, uh, since that's sort of what we're looking at and practicing with right now anyway. So I highly recommend you check out the U.S. Census and uh, see what they have available.